for this one, um, all these little um, sort of intersections here, um, where the bit left around, um, I had to soften these corners with a chisel. It took me a little while. Uh, one of the issues is that I cut this piece with an eighth inch bit. So I have an eighth inch or 16th inch radius in here. And I had to cut this with a 16th inch bit because the eighth inch was too large. It wouldn't make the cut. So cutting this with a 16th inch meant that I had a 30 second radius on here. So the radius would fit better. It would fit closer if I'd cut them both with the same bit. So lessons learned is to if you've got an eighth inch line, use the next bit down in size so you can get a little bit more uh, close up in there. So I cut these corners off. I cut these corners off for the insides uh, and mess with that. So uh, it should go in now. I'm going to glue it in and you'll get to see. So something I will say about the methods of releasing this, uh, the inlay itself from the material that you cut it from is the method that I used here where I cut it an eighth of an inch, uh, cut this piece off proud, and then used the sander meant that this piece was almost exactly uh, within a thousandth or so, an eighth of an inch. So uh, very consistent across its um, length so I was able to do the the um, groove for it uh, at a couple thou less than an eighth of an inch and it's essentially the same height throughout. This one because the bandsaw cut it that you know the, the bandsaw waved a little bit and so the thickness varies a little bit so for instance it's pretty proud here. Um, I had to measure it beforehand so I measured it with a caliper but it's pretty proud here and it's it's almost flush here. So that only means you have to do a little bit more planing, but the point is that you can get it much closer. Um, I didn't want this to be below the surface, and I can still feel the couple thousand is a, like a finger, you know, fingernail. Um, so I'll clean it up and show you what it looks like when it's all done. All right, here they are. Uh, all I did was use a a hand plane, a block plane to flush them up. I have not sanded them or anything like that. Um, they look pretty good. Uh, these little gaps where I had to use the chisel right here have sort of filled in with some glue, I guess. Um, so, like I said, I'd, I'd rather use a smaller bit in here and get that tighter. This, this piece right here is always going to have a point on it because it's an outside cut when you're cutting the grooves. Whereas this piece on the maple is always going to be an inside cut. It's always going to have a radius. But if you can minimize that, I think that um, you could be okay. The other thing I thought about doing was before doing the inlay was taking, I have a flap sander for my drill, running that over and letting it sort of soften some of these edges. I don't know if that would work. That's an idea. Um, this one right here, you can see where the where the crack was, uh, where it broke. Um, not too big a deal, but you can see that this is a little booger where I was going too fast and, and the, the router went outside the line if you move too fast. The rest of it is great, though. I used a 5,000th offset, and, you know, it just went in there good. I was worried that that uh, maybe the tolerances this way and this way would be off a little bit and that when this piece fell into place and this piece fell into place it would pull and crack off this piece. That didn't happen. This was just me pushing it in and messing with it. So I'm pretty happy with it. Now I will say that if you were gonna make if you were gonna make it really tiny that might be more of an issue. Um, if you were gonna make 10 feet of this into trim uh, or edge banding, that might be kind of time consuming, but I will tell you that if I was going to put this in the middle of a desk or on the front of a drawer, definitely worth the time. I mean, I've got other, I've got other ones that uh, I haven't done yet uh, that I just created designs for, and uh, I'll do those and show them to you, but this is, I like this, so pretty cool. Here's a, here's an inlay which looks fairly complex, but in reality it's 
pretty simple to create. I took a 90 degree arc, I duplicated it and flipped it and attached it, made it one piece. Uh, then I essentially kept, I took this piece and offset it here. You can see, and it's offset again here and offset again there. And as you continue to do this, um, you, you get this kind of image and then I flipped it. So eventually you get, you get all of this, you connect it, make it all one piece. That's how it came out. There's some, there's some issues in here and I'll explain what they are. You've got a few gaps here, you got a gap here. Um, but these are from me chiseling it. Um, when I first came out and did this, I put a 5,000th, um, I made, I made the, the mortise, if you will, 5,000th bigger than the inlay, which will typically work very well for a circle or a square or something like that. That wasn't working and I couldn't get it to fit. Uh, it fit down here, but once it got into this complex area, it was not fitting. So what I ended up doing was chiseling uh, some of these areas to see if I could get it to fit. That wasn't working. What ended up working was making these spaces 15 thousandths smaller on the walnut than the inlay was. So 15 thousandths on the inside, five thousandths on the outside, it basically slid in. This is a mistake from me routing. I probably pulled too hard on the router or something like that. But these I think are the chisels because you can see I, they're the same all the way across. Other than that, um, you know, it fits pretty well. Um, I have an end cap on here, meaning that it's not just a square line, which if you, if you draw a line and make it an eighth of an inch wide, it'll just be square. So you put an end cap on. I'll show you how to do that. And so very interesting. Definitely something that is not too hard to do. Here's the issue with um, creating lines and then trying to make them objects. So these are just two lines that are crossed and I need to make them an eighth of an inch wide in this case is what I wanted. So I just grab them and make them an eighth of an inch wide. And the issue here is that the shaper is going to treat that like a line, no matter how much it, how much width it shows on the screen. It's just a line, so it's just going to cut on the line. You can never cut inside of it, and you can't cut outside of it. So what I need to do is um, I will select these and join them, combine them into one object, and that means that I can adjust the radius on those inside corners there. Um, and the other thing I want to do is put an end cap on. So you can see here that it makes the ends of the lines round. So on one of my previous videos, I had a maple inlay and a walnut table, and it, the cuts came out short because the shaper said this is the end of the line, and I really needed the radius of the bit in there. So um, that's what happens. So you need to make the, the end caps round. You can see that on there. Then what you want to do is take it and make it a from a stroke, which is a line, to a path, and that gets you the little nodes there. So now it's actually a, th a two-dimensional uh, path to the computer, which will translate to Shaper. Now I'm going to grab these inside nodes here, and right now they're at a 90-degree angle. You see there's just one point in there. And if I grab those... And I will do a fillet path effect here and make it uh, a radius of 1 32nd of an inch. I've got a 1 16th bit, so a radius is half that. And you'll see that it, <clears throat> well, it's hard to see because it's so small, but I'll zoom in on it. Make it 1 32nd. And what that's going to do is it's put, going to put new, uh, additional nodes in there that will make it a rounded, um, it'll make it rounded. So when I make the inside cut, it'll be rounded. And when I make the outside cut, it'll be rounded and they will fit better from the beginning. That's what I should have done.